Hello, this is Dr. Lori Wilbur. Thank you for joining me on this second discussion topic on measurement scales. I've left this original um, work that we did still on the same board so that we can keep going back and forth. But I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And so we'll be working here more at the bottom of the page. And what I'd like to do is start out by sharing a, um, a way of thinking about um, these measurement scales in a way that um, uses the typical language for um, public health. So I like to put these in order in a specific way and you'll see what I am doing here in just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to use purple for my scale. So there's a couple, little bit of room in here. Okay. So down here at the bottom, I have really put all of my, and let me write it here, categorical vari um, variable types. And then up here at the top, I've put my continuous or my scale variable type. And I've left a little space in the middle. You'll see in a minute that I'm going to add something in there. I'm going to um, give us a little bit more information. But these are the basic types. And so let's name them all. This first one, the D stands for dichotomous. The N stands for nominal. The O stands for ordinal. And the S stands for scale. And the way I like to think about this is that in order to achieve the goal for this particular mini lesson, you need to decide on the best graph or the best descriptive statistics for a given variable. If you're given a variable, then the first task that you have is to decide what kind of a variable it is. Because you can't decide what kind of graph or what kind of descriptive statistics to perform on that variable until you know this. This is so crucial that I will continue testing you on this. The CPH exam tests you on this. Um, given a specific variable, what variable type is it? Is it dichotomous, nominal, ordinal, or scale? And so those are often the four choices that you're given. But of course, they could use, um, they could call this continuous, they could call it a quantitative variable, they could call it numeric, they could do all kinds of things. Um, but essentially they're getting at that particular concept. So um, the, the bottom line is that if we think about all these variables over here on the right hand side, draw, all of those really have something in common in that they are categories. And all of these on the left hand side really have in common that they are scale. And so down here at the bottom, we're going to go with um, categorical and scale. And those are our two big categories. But within categorical, we really need to break it down into these um, other variable types because sometimes that does matter. It does make a difference what kind of a graph we might choose, what kind of descriptive statistics, or even what kind of data analysis we may do inferentially later on um, next quarter. So um, for the dichotomous variable, I like to start here at the bottom. So I start at the bottom and I move up. And I ask a question for each of these levels, dichotomous, nominal, ordinal, scale. And as soon as the answer to my question is no, that means that I have found the correct level of measurement or measurement scale. So my first question is this, are there at least two values. And by values, what I mean is, are there at least men and women in the data set? Or do I have at least two categories? Do I have at least two separate kinds of things? If I don't even have two, then it's not really technically even a variable. And we could talk about that at more length. But you need to have at least two different values um, in order for it to be dichotomous. So as soon as you answer yes to that question, are there at least two values? 
um, you can say, oh, well, it's the least dichotomous. And so then I move up to my next question. Are there at least three values? So maybe instead of just having two groups, I have three or four or five. If my answer to that question is yes, then I have at least a nominal. It's not just a dichotomous anymore, it's at least nominal. And then the next question that I ask is, are they in order? And by in order, what I mean is, is there a logical order from high to low or low to high or some other meaningful measure? Not just that I coded them, one is equal to white, two is equal to black, three is equal to Hispanic, four is equal to other. Not just that I coded them that way, but in that case of race, ethnicity, I could have put them in a totally different order. I could have started with other. Other equals one, white equals two, Hispanic equals three, black equals four. I could have changed the order and it wouldn't have really made any difference. Whereas if I'm thinking about like a pain scale or a happiness scale, it really does go from low to high. There is some logical order there's some meaningful order to the way that those are coded. And we'll, we'll talk about some specific examples where there may be numbers, but there really is no meaning in the order. That number just represents um, something. And then my final question, and this takes me all the way up to scale, is goes back to this whole notion of are there equal intervals? And so let me go back down here and say R. Oops. Equal intervals. And what I mean by equal intervals is if I was to have a ruler of some kind, imagine that's a straight line if you can, um, I would have like the same amount of difference between them, between each of those adjacent. It does not mean that I have a person that has every single measurement level. I don't have to have a person who's five foot three and five foot four and five foot five and five foot six. If my data set does not have a person who's five foot seven, that does not mess this up. Um, it just means that on the scale, that the adjacent values are equally far apart from each other. Let me get rid of this line. So there are equal intervals, and a ruler is the perfect mental image for this, but that, that ruler could be for BMI. It could be BMI goes along that ruler. It could be milligrams per deciliter for something that we're measuring in a person's blood levels or it could be kilograms or other kinds of things that we measure. Um, so this really helps me if I have a brand new variable um, that I can test it and I can see exactly where it falls. Does it fall in the categorical range or does it fall in the scale range? So let's test this on a couple of different variables up here. So let's take a look, say, at happiness. And in the data set, there's, um, there are people with low, there are people with moderate, and there are people with high. Let's say they're coded one, two, and three, just to make it easy. And so then I go down here to my, to my way of thinking. And so I start at the bottom, and I say to myself, are there, are there at least two values? And I say, yeah, there's one, two, and three. There's, there's at least two. So then I move on to the next thing. Are there at least three values? Yes, there are. Um, at least three values. Um, next I say, are they in order? Well, low, medium, high really makes the most sense. I would not say low, high, medium or medium, high, low. Um, those other ways of ordering it really aren't as logical. Like it doesn't go from one end to the other. Um, so yes, they are in order. So we're saying yes, yes, and yes. Um, and then I go to my last one, say, hmm, are there equal intervals? 
And the answer to that is no, because I don't know specifically that the difference between low happiness and moderate happiness is the same amount as the difference between moderate happiness and high happiness. Um, could be that there's a difference there. Um, and a lot of times that happens with things that are subjective. Most things that are subjective end up being more, a lot, more likely to be categorical. So because I can't progress there, then I end up with an ordinal variable. And so now I've decided that that is ordinal. So let's erase some of this. And let's go ahead and take a look at another variable. Let's pick one here, over here on the left-hand side, just out of general principle. Let's choose birth weight, birth weight in grams. And so if I were to go down here to my, to my setup, I, you'll have to imagine with me a data set, and I've got like 100 different babies in there, and how much were, did they weigh when they were born? Um, you know, they weigh anywhere from like really tiny little babies all the way up to sometimes pretty big ones, like eight or nine pounds, so lots and lots of grams. Um, so here we have, we start at the beginning, and we say, okay, um, are there at least two values? It's like, oh yeah, there are like hundreds of the different values. Um, are there at least three values? Yep. Are they in order? Um, and I would say, yeah, they are. So the ones that have a tiny little number, that baby weighed very little. You know, we've got our tiny little preemie babies, and they didn't weigh very much. And then as they have a longer and longer gestational age, they weighed more and more and more typically. Um, so yeah, they, they are definitely in a specific order. I, I could... I could put them in order from lowest to highest in terms of birth weight. And then my last question is, are there equal intervals? And I would say yes. The difference between 1,000 grams and 1,001 grams is the same amount of difference as 1,500 grams and 1,501 or 1,583 and 1,584. The amount of difference of going from one to the next is always the same. Those those intervals are equally spaced. And so here with birth weight, I end up with scale. And that's not surprising because up here on the top, I already said that's a scale variable right there. Um, it's going to be a quantitative variable. Quantity, I have a quantity of grams. I'm measuring how many grams. And so um, that's going to be a scale variable. Let's do one last one. And I'm going to pick one that only has two categories. Um, here, I have females and males in my study. So let's go down here and we'll start out at the bottom. And we'll say, okay, let's pick purple. Um, are there at least two values? Yep, I have M and I have F. Um, are there at least three values? And in this particular data set, let's just imagine that they do not um, take into account like other types of uh, sex for um, the purposes of this question. Um, so I would say, no, there are not. And so I have to go back down to dichotomous. That tells me that this is, ends up being a dichotomous variable. So some common um, types of variables that we might see. Um, sex is a common dichotomous variable. Um, a common nominal variable that we see a lot um, in public health is race ethnicity. A common ordinal variable, maybe things like a Likert scale, any kind of a Likert um, measurement, um, like the pain scale we saw above that was on a scale of 0 to 5. So a lot of questions on a scale of 1 to 5 rank your opinion about something. So you see that that's a little bit subjective, and so that's why we can't automatically say that the difference between those adjacent points is even. And then some really, uh, anything, now here's, here's like a flag that I want to show you. Anytime you have this particular thing following um, the name, so here we have age in years, height in centimeters, birth weight in grams, BMI in kilograms per meter squared, family income in dollars, blood sugar in milligrams per deciliter. Very, very often um, these scale variables will have what I call units of measure. It's a, it's a way of um, saying, what, what, are, what are the units I'm measuring? 
what what scale is is this? What what is this scale right here? Um, what is it centimeters or inches by measuring height um, or even kilometers or um, decimeters or I, I don't know like it could if you're measuring length it could be all kinds of different scales and so for a scale variable you have to specify there are a few ratio variables that do not have units of measure and I'll point those out as we go through the quarter but almost 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 always your scale variables are going to have that dead giveaway in parentheses it's going to say age in years it's going to tell you what the units of measure are and so that can be a really 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 helpful way of figuring out that then all of a sudden you have a scale variable now I promised earlier that I was going to show you um, I have to raise this little arrow in the middle I'm going to show you what happens in this in-between spot there's a special thing that happens um, to ordinal variables where they get promoted and to scale variables where they get demoted and they create this whole new category. So I have scale variables up here and I have categorical variables down here. And then I have this brand new category in the middle. And what happens is I create uh, this new variable and it has different kinds of graphs that go with it and different kinds of descriptive statistics so this is important remember how I said um, the reason we're doing this is so that you can plug a variable in to this algorithm and at the end you can tell what kind of graph and what kind of descriptive statistics you would do for that particular variable you have to be able to do this part right here you have to be able to pick what kind of variable is this in order to know what kind of thing you're going to do to that variable in order to describe it in order to summarize it so the thing that happens to a scale variable is that if it is not normally distributed and L is short for normal normally D I S T if I can spell here not normally distributed um, and the way that happens is usually you either have skew or kurtosis and usually in um, in data analysis we focus more on the skew and so maybe if if I have up top here scale these really have to be normally distributed so here's my normally distributed distribution if I put a mirror in the middle it would look about the same on the right as it does on the left and so that's normal um, it does not have skew and then the other feature is kurtosis and if you kind of did your homework about some of the terminology in public health then you would know that that means that it's either more pointy or more flat so um, if it's not normally distributed then often you'll have this shape that's like way off to the right and so you can't use the mean to describe that as easily at some point you have so much skew or so many outliers or so much kurtosis that the kinds of graphs and descriptive statistics that would work for this top section don't work for this middle section anymore so we're going to have a special set of graphs and descriptive statistics the other thing that can happen to ordinal variables is when they have lots and lots and lots of categories then sometimes they start behaving as if they're sort of like a scale variable so you can imagine if I have a Likert scale from 0 to 20 then all of a sudden there are so many different categories that it starts sort of behaving as if it's scale although not quite because the distance between intervals still is not equal and the place that we call this the first question people ask well how many categories does it need to have in order to be promoted like this how many to, to get this promotion most statisticians would say about eight eight or more categories so as soon as I have eight or more categories then this variable starts behaving as if it's like a scale variable but it's technically not scale and so it kind of starts looking like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 or 1 through 8 or whatever it starts kind of behaving a little bit more like it and so these two situations end up having 
um, a special kind of graph and descriptive statistics that go with them, and we're going to cover that in the next lecture. So now that you know the different kinds of variables, we have these three main groups. We have categorical, which is dichotomous, nominal, and ordinal. And specifically, this kind of ordinal is 7 or fewer. I'll put a 7 minus. So it could be 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 ordinal, right? Um, that are in order, but there aren't enough really for it to start behaving like scale. And then you have this middle category. That's the scale, not normally distributed, or ordinal 8 plus categories. And then you have this top category that has its own kind of graphs and descriptive statistics. So these three groups have different kinds of graphs and descriptive statistics. So our next um, uh, video is going to be talking about those. Thank you for joining me for this description's advanced discussion on measurement scales.